tomorrow you're going to hear a marvelous testimony from Brother Ed. You'll hear his full name and who he is of how God has changed his life and he is now a follower of Christ because he's connected with Christ. You see, the everlasting gospel is eternal. The past, the present, and the future focused on Christ. We are called to preach it to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. That's why the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in 215 countries or so around the world. Now in verse 7, it goes on saying the following. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. The, uh, for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Now this first angel proclaims with a loud voice so everyone can hear. Always give God the glory and praise for everything, fellow leaders. Don't give praise and honor to yourself. When someone compliments you, oh, that was a great sermon, pastor, and oh, you're doing a great work, don't say, well, thank you. That's very good. I've been spending a lot of time, so I, I, I deserve that. No, just say, praise the Lord. Now, the next text says, for the hour of his judgment has come. Yes, we are being judged. Beginning in 1844, the investigated judgment in the most holy place in heaven began as the Lord reviewed the lives of people down through history. One day, probation is going to close. So that's why it's so important to lean on Jesus every day. This judgment is also in front of the entire universe, telling whether God's wonderful foundation of love is just, pure, and true. Of course, it will be shown at the end of time that everything God does is perfect. But the passage states we are to worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. This is crucial because it ties into the third angel's message, signifying that God is the all-powerful creator. We are to worship him not only in spirit and truth, but on the day that he has asked us to worship him. The seventh day Sabbath, the sign of his authority. And it is the seventh day today and always has been and will be the sabbath has not been lost the seventh day sabbath will become one of the great controversial topics in the last days it is in complete opposition to the mark of the beast because the seal of god is the keeping of the seventh day sabbath the time will come to make the ultimate decision of who to worship by indicating where our loyalties lie with God by worshiping him on the day he has indicated, the holy seventh-day Sabbath, regardless of the consequences, or by following the beast who has set up his false day of worship. It is at that time when that choice has to be made, that those who choose to keep Sunday will receive the mark of the beast. For the mark of the beast is the keeping of Sunday, the beast's false day of worship. Now, listen to what Great Controversy says on page 604, plainly stating, when with the issue that thus clearly brought before him, Whoever shall trample upon God's law to obey a human enactment receives the mark of the beast. Now it goes on to say on page 605 the following. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty for it is the point of truth especially controverted or, 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 or discussed or, or uh, disagreed on. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him not. While the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state 
contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God, the keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, the other, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receive the seal of God. Clearly, the seal of God is connected with the keeping of the seventh day Sabbath as holy, as we rely on the Lord, allowing his justifying and sanctifying power to work in us, bringing glory to him. My friends, the great controversy, the book, is a marvelous book. During the last days, many incredible supernatural events will be happening. This powerful book pulls aside the curtain, warning us of what lies ahead. I believe every word in this book, the great controversy, I support it and promote it, the full and complete copy of the great controversy. As you know, at the 2020 annual council in this room, we overwhelmingly voted to have the great controversy be the missionary book of the year for the two years of 2023 and 2024. The plan is called the Great Controversy Project 2.0. And the goal is to distribute around the world millions upon millions of this very relevant life-changing book in hard copies and electronic downloads. This is not just some uniform mass mailing project, but rather a personal outreach project where we are inviting all pastors, members, leaders, young people, all Seventh-day Adventists to become personally involved in sharing this book with their friends, neighbors, coworkers, communities, and online. Although some copies will certainly be mailed, the vast majority of books will be hand-delivered as well as downloaded electronically. Truly, we know the most effective way to share literature is by personal outreach. So we encourage everyone to become personally involved with this Missionary Book of the Year project. You can begin right now. You don't have to wait till 2023. Please strongly support and participate in this program. Ellen White said the great controversy was the book she wished circulated more than any other book she had written because it has such great truth, beginning with the early Christian church to the end of time. An incredible description of what will happen in the end is found on page 624. Listen to this incredible prediction. As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air. Christ has come. Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth. His voice is soft and subdued, yet full of melody and gentle, compassionate tones. He presents some of the same gracious heavenly truths which the Savior uttered. He heals the diseases of the people. And then, in his assumed character of Christ, 
assumed character. He claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. Can you imagine the deception and unbelievable delusion that will take place? We will not be able to believe even what we see or hear. We can only believe what we read in the Bible according to his word. As we know, when Jesus returns, the Bible says it, every eye will see him, not just a few. Now, continuing in the great controversy, and this is where it comes down to you and to me. It says, he, that is Satan, declares that those who persist in keeping holy the seventh day are blaspheming his name by refusing to listen to his angels sent to them with light and truth. This is the strong, almost overmastering delusion. And my friends urge our church members and the world not to be deceived. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, on his holy word, and that which he is calling us to proclaim. Kahit isang